Yo, what's going on, guys? Um, just a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Second reminder, um, there is a, another 80% APEX sale. I know they just keep having sales, you know. Um, so make sure to click the link in the description. Someone asked me the other day how I was able to practice the most and get good at ICT. Honestly, use the eval Apex accounts on discount. You can just buy so many of them, and it, and it gives you some emotion, so those help a lot. Um, and, yeah, third thing is I will be going on a cruise um, next week, so just want to let you guys know if you want to sign up for my Patreon. I probably would not um, until I'm back from my cruise. It's up to you. Um, been having banger live streams, so. And uh, I think Leopard is, so someone on my Discord, Leopard should be live streaming next week, um, or Levi, it depends. Um I just won't be as good as me, of course, but, um, you know, you know the vibes, so I'm just kidding. Um, all love to Leopard and Levi. All right, let's get started with the video. Okay, so I'm going to try to click less. Um, i getting some complaints about that. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be going um, over, like, when I like to trade versus not trade, okay? And there's the really obvious, obvious one that is all over Twitter, okay? Most of you guys probably know what it is. If you don't, um, it's it goes over kind of okay if London high and lower taken or Asia high and lower taken in London session you do not trade and I I like it but I don't at the same time because sometimes when that happens the price action is still good so if we just look at an example of that if we go to the overnight session of last night um, if we start at London which would be 20 hundred and we kind of look at the high and low so here's the start of London Oh, by the way, this is a great time to use the kill zone, the kill zone indicator. Um, let me go to this real quick. Kill zone, it's by tr trade for ops. What's this indicator called? Someone tell me. ICT kill zones. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. ICT kill zones, trade for ops. Okay, right here. So if we turn this on, um, yeah, I see. Okay, and then go to, you can see we have the kill zone. So great time to use these. And people say, when's it not a good time to trade? It's not a good time to trade when Asia high and low are taken out. So Asia is obviously 2,000 to 0, 0, which is this blue right here. Okay, and Again, I'll explain why I don't like this in a second. But in this situation, you can see London takes up the high, London takes up the low, okay, which is fine. Okay, now in New York session, you can see New York takes up the high, but we never take up the one low, which doesn't really mean much. Um, but in this situation, people say, okay, because Asia high and low are taken out, you don't trade. Okay, and the reason why I don't like this is if you can clearly see why. So if you kind of turn off this, and we go to the start of New York session, which is you use your handy dandy indicator. Start of the New York session, which is right here. You can see this price action is not bad. It's pretty volatile. So while some days the kind of the trip, the trick where, okay, you do not use, you do not trade if Asia high and low are taken out, okay? When, when you kind of do that, some days the price action will be bad. Sometimes it'll be good like this, okay? And I feel like on a day like today, even though Asia high and low are taken out, price action was fine okay so instead what I currently do which I see doesn't really teach this is just my perspective and what I've kind of taught myself what I personally do is I'll kind of gauge the open I'll see how volatile the open is and if you and I'll go to the one minute and I'll kind of see okay is ES moving more than five points very quickly the open okay and if we look sure enough we open right here um, right here okay Asia moves in immediate five points and then immediate like 10 points down. So as soon as I see that, it's like, okay, here's a lot of displacement. Here's a market structure shift. This is a 10 point move. You short this, right? Even though I know Asia high and lower taken out, I see enough speed and displacement in this move alone to say, okay, price action will not be horrible, okay? Let's say this is like a, just this red candle is like a five point candle in a five point up move and we kind of get nowhere. Um, so in this situation, because I see the market move more than 10 points and we'd really cut to a low, that tells me, okay, there's a lot of displacement, there's a lot of speed. Those are trading conditions alike, okay? Um, I don't care that we took out H to high and low, okay? If you, first of all, if you look, 
Asia range right here, this is like a five point range. Of course we're gonna take out the high and low, okay? So, and especially if Asia is really like tight like this, it's to be expected the high and low is gonna be taken out. So now you just kind of watch, okay, is there speed in the candles? How quickly are they moving, right? What what displacement is there? And my general rule of thumb is if ES moves more than 10 points in the first like 15 minutes, like five to 10 points, I would say it's tradable, okay? Any less than that, it's it's hard to trade, okay? NQ, I would say, is if NQ is moving more than 10, 15 points in the, in the first 15 minutes of open, it's tradable, okay? Um, so that's really my biggest my, my biggest giveaway. So even though people say don't trade with London highs and lows taken out or Asia highs and lows taken out, I kind of gauge, okay, is there movement? Is there speed? Is there displacement? And sure enough, if there is, I like to trade, okay? The other thing, we get to this point during the day where I'm like, okay, like today, we kind of got to this 10.55, 11 o'clock, you can start to see price action is slowing down a lot. And at this point, I'm like, okay, we have CPI tomorrow, and we know a price is not as good. And I'm, I'm telling people in Discord chat, I'm like, okay, price is not good. I would not take a trade. And then I kind of changed my mind a little bit, okay? After we get all the consolidation, which is terrible price action, after some time, I was like, okay, in Discord, I said right here, I said I'm trying to get MES long. Obviously, you can see what happened after this. When does price like to move the most? It likes to move after we consolidate. So if you kind of look at pre-market, before the market open, we consolidated, market open, huge rip. And the other time I like to trade, even if we move some tomorrow, even if we have anything, is if I see price kind of consolidate like this, I'm like, okay, this is terrible price action, this is terrible price action. But we get like a, probably 30 minutes of this. I'll actually be, okay, well, we've consolidated for a while. There's no way we keep consolidating like this. At least we're going to get a move, at least a buy side or sell side. Then I'll kind of be interested in a play. Rather, if we kind of rip the kill zone ends, I know we have CPI tomorrow, I'll stop for like an hour. And I'll kind of see what price does. If price kept expanding here, I would have been totally done because if price kept expanding with CPI tomorrow, I would expect price to consolidate eventually. I wouldn't know when. So if price still hasn't consolidated, that's when I would not trade, especially news tomorrow. Okay. But if I see price consolidating and I still know there's news tomorrow, well, even though there's news tomorrow, price is still consolidating. We're probably going to get a big move at some point. So that's the second time I like to trade. And that's like, some people say, oh, I'm totally done, CPI tomorrow. But if you see consolidation like this with some news event tomorrow, usually we do end up getting a big move. Um, you just don't want to take it after expansion. You want to take it after consolidation. So I kind of saw enough consolidation here. I saw us rip back above this Fair Valley gap. Price kept getting tighter, 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 tighter. And I was like, okay, we got to break out soon. If you look very carefully, there was a 15-minute order block. See it right here? And I was like, okay, we've held this for some time. We kind of reacted off it. I said, I'm trying the MES long. Okay, I was not trying the MES long here right when we tapped the order block because if you look at these two candles, two big expansion candles. Why would I want to take a long after two big expansion candles, especially with CPI tomorrow? So I wait for the consolidation. And at this point, I'm really off the chart. I come back, see if we go anywhere. And I was like, okay, we haven't gone anywhere. We were just consolidating. We're still holding the 15 minute order block. So it's like, okay, we've been consolidating for a while on the order block. What do you expect price to do after consolidation? Probably expand. Okay, and that's the other time I'll be interested in a trade. Okay, but like I said, if we expanded here, and I would never have bought this. I don't care if this long work. We could have ripped right back up. What have I, I been in? No, because that means I would be gambling because we just got expansion. I'm not going to take a second expansion move with news tomorrow. Okay. Let's say there's no news tomorrow. I probably would have bought this candle right here, okay? And I bet you this would have been much quicker. But with news tomorrow, you, you really wanna be making sure you get in after we somewhat consolidate, just like options. Options are gonna work the best after somewhat of a consolidation move, okay? If you take options after a huge up move, that's what they want, like that's what the market wants you to do. The market wants you to enter SPX calls after you've ripped a ton because that's when we start consolidating, wreck the option traders, options get stopped out, data kills them, 
and then we rip again. Okay, so especially the news days, the next day, I really like to wait for some consolidation to occur before I get in, unless it's like 9.30 to 10.30. Usually 9.30 to 10.30, we usually get some good volatility, but anytime after that, I wait for consolidation first, even if we don't get it, and then maybe I'll enter a play. But other than that, I don't really like to enter. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Same thing with NQ, I kind of went over ES in this example. Um, but in this example, okay, what do you see here? You see giant rip down. Okay, am I going to take a play after giant rip down? Definitely not. I'm going to wait to see if we kind of slow down a little bit. Okay. We rip back up. Am I long in this? Probably not because I know we have CPI tomorrow. Okay, I just want you to realize we do have news tomorrow. Okay, here's the 1030 line. So this is the 1030 line. Anything before 1030 is valid to long. After 1030, I kind of cut it off, especially in news tomorrow. Okay, and you can kind of see price slows down, slows down. Did it have to slow down here? It did definitely did not have to slow down here, okay? Price did not have to slow down here. But did it? Yes, it did. Okay, and if we're reacting live time, we kind of got to realize, okay, price did slow down. Now maybe we kind of consolidate a lot. I know even it was tomorrow. But if we're consolidating this much, you, you kind of expect a big move after that. That's when you get interested in the charts. Okay. Asia session, I do not trade. London session, I rarely trade. I sometimes just set alerts and wake up overnight, but rarely. 8.30 to 10.30 is like the prime time. And then anytime after that, ideally wait for consolidation to occur and then wait for the move. Okay. I think that's the best thing. Uh, and then... The other thing I want you to say is this. If you start seeing inverse fair rally gaps get closed above and, and below again, that is not good price action. I stop after that. Okay. Let me see if I can find an example. So in this example right here, okay, you can clearly see inverse is respected. We pump back above, inverse is respected. So this is price action I love to trade. Okay. But if we go to a different example, like right here, see how we close below, then close above, and then we wake down way below again, and then we finally pump, right? When you see us close below this inverse and not hit sell side, which the market ideally should, or generally you want to see, it doesn't have to, but generally you want to see, that's when I stop trading. If we get closes above and below, without follow through of an inverse, okay? Um, that's bad price action. After the first or second time I see that happen, I generally stop, and then when do I come back? The next session. If it's the PM session, I come back the next day. If it's the AM session, I come back the next morning. Okay, so that's the other big tip. So that's all I got for today. Um, hopefully that was a little less clicky for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions, um, and I will see you guys later. Peace.